Bro, quit cutting me off. I just want a drink. It stole my dollar. My dollar and a quarter. Point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. <laughs> you throw a shade, bro. Can I get a little bit up? Can I get a little bit up? Or really just a little bit up? Can I get a little bit up? Can I get a little bit of really just a little bit of I need you, I need you. I need you, I need you, need you, girl. I need Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? It's your boy TJ, and you already know what time it is. It's time to play some Stanley Parable. <laughs> Alright, this is a game that I've seen so many other people playing, and then I found it on Steam, so now I'm looking at it like, yo, I feel like this is going to be an interesting ass game to play. So, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> um, if you guys are wondering how you can play this game, I will leave a link to it in the description. Remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you get notified every single time I post, whether you're ready or not. It doesn't matter because I'm going to do it anyway. Let's get it! This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Hey, who's employee this dude talking to me? number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders Yo. came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push how long to push them, and in what order. That's an easy This is what job, employee what? 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. Uh-uh. And Stanley was happy. That's boring as hell, what? How can he be happy? And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor okay. for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Wait. Oh, it's me. It's me. It's DDP. Yo. <laughs> okay. Um, now back to what Dude said. <laughs> so... Dude literally sat there for an hour, cause just waiting. Hell, dog, bro. Why are you? I would have. I would have turned on. Nah, nah, nah. I'm not gonna finish that sentence. <laughs> uh, uh. Nope. I refuse. Not getting demonetized. <laughs> uh. So like, maybe I want to stay in the office though. Like this is all the dude knows, right? What he got over here? Is there anything I can do? Okay, so I, I can, I can touch stuff. Can I? Yeah, yeah. That's me. Any other buttons? Nothing. Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Hmm. Yeah, how my door shut behind me? Can I, can I open it back up? I can't get back in my office. Okay, whatever. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Yo, if you cut me off again, we're gonna have some problems, bruh. Is anybody in there? There's a random ass ladder. Whatever. Am I going the right way? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, 
He entered the door on his left. Yo, why do I feel like... I'm not listening to you. You want me to go to the left? Alright. Psych. <laughs> this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Yo, he did say drink. Can I get a drink? Yo, we stole yes. my dollars. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Bro, quit cutting me off. I just want a drink. It stole my dollar. My dollar and a quarter. Point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. <laughs> you throw a shade, bro. I just want a drink. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Yeah, I don't know if I like this dude. <laughs> He's really throwing shade. And you keep on shutting doors behind me, so like, how you expect me to go back anyway? Am I like, where am I, where do I go? That don't look safe, dog. I don't want to get on there. What does it say? Penalty for misuse of cargo lift. $1,000? Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift. $5,000. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure if you jump off, you're going to die. So, <laughs> that's $5,000 somebody else going to have to pay. $5,000? That's outrageous. Is it moving? Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy. Really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. Wait, hold on. Can I jump off? someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Oh, shit! Some but in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. I got tired of listening to his voice. Stanley stood for a long time in one spot. It's part of a game. He likes to see how long he can go without dying. So far, he's doing excellent. And if he just stays right where he is, I'm sure he'll keep up that good momentum. Let's observe the genius at work. Is he being sarcastic? All right, I'm back here. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. It will cause death. I didn't get penalty. I didn't get a penalty for five thousand dollars, so that's a lie. <laughs> Look, right, Stanley, I think perhaps goes. we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really. I'm not. You know, I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. For her? What are you talking Mr. about? Stanley, your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Who is her? She's been waiting. Who is her? And stop calling me Stanley. I prefer Stan. Where am I now? Yo, what's this dude's job? Like, there's all this stuff here, and all I did was sit on the computer and press buttons. They had me brainwashed, yo. What's through here? Uh-uh, it's dark in there. I'm not going in there. <laughs> uh-uh. It's dark as fuck in there. I'm not going in there. Nope, that's not working. Fuck it. I'll go through. Oh, shit. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. 
I'm not picking up nothing. Come on, plug it. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. Yo. <laughs> it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. Okay. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? What? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. Oh, really? <laughs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional. Oh, that's no video. Ah, what the fuck? Back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. What? <laughs> Why did you make me sit through all that? Uh, hold on, can I plug the phone back in? Honestly, I didn't even know I could do that. <laughs> Are you trying to make me go back? I don't want to go back. What's up here? Nope, it's locked. Okay, guess I gotta go back. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Yo, what Imagine the, fuck? the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, okay. it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. So I can't... Yeah, they legit made it to where I can't run off. Where, where are you taking me? Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Maybe I don't want to go back to the real world. I play video games to escape reality. Isn't that like the whole point of playing video games? You still won't let me get no damn drink. I'm restarting, right? Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. Oh, really? That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> I'm an ass. <laughs> no! Why did you do that? What the fuck? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Yo, is the game glitching out or something? Wait, so they're forcing me to go. Okay, fine. I'll go this way since you really want me to go this way. The numbers are getting smaller. No, oh, it's ruined. <laughs> I can't believe after everything we talked about that you, my story, you've destroyed my work. Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. Yo. What am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. 
I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Wait, whoa, what the fuck? Yo, yo. <laughs> Yo, I think the narrator just had a nervous breakdown, bro. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm here. What? I'm still here. Here what? in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. <laughs> that thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, my story. <laughs> if you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. Yeah, that actually I sounds pretty so cool. Hard on it. I tried so hard. Wait, you good? Just behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> What just happened? I'm an ass. <laughs> no! Why did you do that? Wait. Quickly. Hurry. Go, 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 go. Oh, shoot. I re behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. It took me I'm back. Quite sure. Okay, so I'm guessing it's just going to keep on looping. So I might as well go to the left. Just to make him happy. I don't want him to stress himself out. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Oh, find an answer. An answer? Going to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Yo, there's like clearly doors down there. Why can't I go down there? I don't know why. I'm just, I'm like so rebellious. I just want to do like the opposite of what he says. Nope, can't go through there. Yo. This is like... This is office? No, this is receptionist office. Where's his office? Why is it so dark? Oh, it's in here. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up. But now, he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath, and then spoke the code. Yeah, I'm gonna be real with you. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't. I want to save that for, like, a, another... <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver. Right there on the wall. I heard you the first time, homie. <laughs> it's really fun pissing him off. Do I have to? I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Um, Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. It must be a crucial step, but I don't want to do it. Don't get, don't get lippy with me. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it, but you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. 
If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? I Speak. did go to the right. To me. Explain yourself, you coward. I did go to the right. Oh, damn. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yo, what the fuck? Is he gonna go? Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Yeah, what Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. The end? I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything alright? <laughs> Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. Wait, is this the end of the game? Alright, so... I decided to come back to this part because I'm actually very curious to see what happens when I pick up the phone. So, I'm going to be a good person. I'm actually going to pick up the phone. Or I could just let it ring. Tick, tick, okay, whatever. Oh! Four twenty-seven. that's my office number. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie, sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about- Get your day The fuck? <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Yeah, you're an ass this for that, bro. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Wait, nigga, what? <laughs> Good morning, employee 427. Press LT on your gamepad. LT? Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Wait, so this isn't my wife? I tap that. Yo, it's like this mannequin is like staring into my soul. You really had me thinking I was married, motherfucker. And I tried again. Died? What? Stanley nigga? pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. Yo, this motherfucker just told me to die. Yo. We're back at the beginning, but it looks a little different. The homie's not talking. <laughs> I, I know he's not mad at me, is he? Yo, there's papers all over the floor. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. And... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did it just start over, but like with papers everywhere? Well, what happens if I... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Hold on, so Standing like... Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first still time still a dollar twenty-five? Come on now. Happiness. Then the feeling went away, and he felt sad again. Then it came back, and lingered for a minute or two. Now it's only half there. Just a kind of, um, tingle. But eager to get back to business, 
Stanley took the first open door on his left. Hold on, so it did just restart. Let me go back to the beginning. And so he detoured Yo, through whoa. the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Yo, why is this lit up? Oh, I'm curious. I'm curious. F it. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now in order to get back, he needed to go, um, uh, uh, from here, it's, um, left. You know what? I feel like this is going to be a whole other story. And I don't really have time to do that again. So, this game is very interesting. <laughs> um, it's been trolling the freak out of me. But it, it feels like I've been trying to like really like go back at him. So I've been trolling him. But like, yo, this game is actually really, really dope. But I'm really curious to see what, what's going to happen. And I'm pretty sure there's like more than one ending to this game. So... Yeah, I'm gonna leave it at I'm gonna leave it at this. Now again, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you get notified every single time I post. Uh leave suggestions for games that you want me to play. I remember making a post on my Facebook about it and didn't I got some likes, but that's it. So yeah. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace! Get big, not so sad, it might be bliss. She says she wanna kid, but it might be tricks. And I won't hit